Hello, in today's video we will discuss about a very wonderful medicine which is responsible for discovery of homeopathy and we will discuss how Dr. Samuel Christian Frederick Henneman discovered this medicine and how homeopathy has been discovered through this medicine that is Sincona officinalis or you can say China. So as you can see here common name of this medicine is Peruvian bark. So mainly medicines which are prepared from this they are made from the bark of this particular plant. Now we will discuss about discovery of homeopathy and story behind Sincona officinalis or China that how Dr. Hanneman discovered China and through this medicine how he make another medicine medicinal term another pathy that is homeopathy so we will discuss about this so China officinalis was the first remedy to be proved by Dr. Samuel Hanneman it is therefore a very important remedy in the history of homeopathy and consequently it is one of the first that aspiring homeopaths study. The remedy comes from the Peruvian bark Sincona which was used in the treatment of malaria in Hanneman's time. It was named in 1742 by a Swedish botanist physician and geologist Carlos Linnaeus. After the countenance of Sincona, the wife of Spanish Anve who was reputed to have been cured of malaria in about 1640. So while translating a medical text by the Scottish physician that is William Cullen Hanneman found himself disagreeing with the author's explanation as how it worked. The Cullen's postulates that it worked because it produced a tonic effect on the stomach. So Hanneman thought this to be highly unlikely because after astringents has no effects against malaria. So accordingly, he began dosing himself with the drug in his famous Sincona experiment. He found that he experiences symptoms not unlike those that occurred in case of malaria. From this case, the germs of an idea that was eventually to become homeopathy. So Sincona is an excellent extremely effective remedy indeed in my experience dr hanneman said that when it is well indicated it results its results has been usually been quite dramatic so this was the story behind sincona bark and how homeopathy has been discovered through this wonderful medicine that is sincona officinalis so as you can see here we have provided the picture that plant bark of and bark also of Sincona officinalis. So in today's video we will basically discuss about the sphere of action of Sincona bark or Sincona officinalis on human body and what are the 17 special centers of action of Sincona officinalis on human body so one by one we will discuss about them so let's start so first center here is brain the effect of this remedy are especially centered up on the base of the brain affecting particularly the corporea striata optic thalami and corpora quadrigemina from the irritation and prostration of these organs, we have intense congestion bordering of inflammation of the brain. 
giddiness and budging in the ears as the most effect of this medicine but the confusion of sight and faintness which accompany them cease as soon as the patient lies down so this is how cinchona bark acts upon the first center that is human brain now next center we will talk about that is auditory nerve so here basically we are talking about ears so the action here is specific and powerful as shown by the various sounds in the ears as singing roaring hissing buzzing hardness of hearing and in many instances positive deafness has been produced by large doses of quinine short name for this medicine that is cinchona officinalis it has a very powerful chemical present in the present in its bark that is called quinine so if you will take large doses of quinine or you can say peruvian bark so it can produce positive deafness in large doses and as we all know that something which is very less in quantity is considered as nectar and something which is too much in quantity that is considered as poison so if you will take in high dose it will definitely affect your system so this was all about how cinchona bark acts upon auditory nerve of human being now next center that is eyes so through its action upon the corpora quadrigemina we have dilatation of the pupils and sometimes complete blindness the eye is morbidly sensitive and experiences a feeling of tension vision is subsequently clouded object appear double and unnaturally small finally very large doses may produce blindness in that case the pupil are largely dilated so this was all about how cinchona bark acts upon eyes now next center that is trigeminous nerve so upon the fifth pair of the nerve that is trigeminous cinchona bark and its alkaloid that is quinine has a specific action produces hyperesthesia and severe neuralgia it is very much familiar about bell's palsy of face so this particular nerve that is trigeminous is responsible for bell's palsy so with the help of cinchona one can treat it successfully that is bell's palsy so this was how cinchona bark act on the trigeminous nerve now next center we will discuss about that is pneumogastric nerve so upon this nerve with its various branches cinchona and its alkaloid that is quinine has a special and profound action first the digestive organs here its action is shown by the putrid bitter taste white coated tongue canine hunger or you can say ravenous hunger or complete loss of appetite there will be violent thirst sore irritations nausea and vomiting of acid food bilious and bitter vomiting will be there slow digestion with much flatulence and gastralgia so this is how cinchona officinalis works on pneumogastric nerve now next center that is spleen so 
through the filaments of the vagus cunein has a marked influence on the spleens large doses of cunein first diminish the size of spleen by its action upon the muscular fibers of the veins that this organ is so abundantly supplied the effect of organic reactions or secondary effect is an excessive supply of the blood producing enlargement and chronic hypertrophy of the spleen hence its great utility in enlargement of the spleen following intermittent fever so this is how cinchona bark act on spleen now next center that is lungs so here we are talking about lungs it produces congestion with hematitis dyspnea anemia and great debility debility simple means weakness so according to dr style he says that the lungs are embarrassed in their functions but probably through the nerves more than the circulation system is proved by observations it is not unusual for persons under the influence of large doses to complain of tightness and operation means suppression of the precordia while the face grows paleness and beards a look of distress means the patient face will be look like a dead ill person sometimes indeed there is a severe dyspnea and a sibilant roncus this is a particular sound which you can listen by using stethoscope if the person have bronchial asthma if person has bronchitis if person had pneumonia okay so this was all about how cinchona bark acts upon respiratory organs now next center we have liver which is the largest gland of our body so let's discuss about this cinchona and its alkaloid that is cunein the sulfate of cunein just how it acts upon this organ is still somewhat of a mystery but the action of cinchona and especially its alkaloid is to produce complete prostration of the nervous centers and through them of the tissues in congestion with them they cause hepatic cells with paresis and long lasting congestion of the liver with its so other many symptoms and one of the most prominent of these symptom is jaundice jaundice is not a disease but it's a symptom as we all know that and it is produced by following ways we all know that the bile already secreted is reabsorbed and stagnates in the hepatic cells in bile ducts and in consequence of paralysis or mechanical impediments to its excretion it is then carried into the blood by means of veins and lymphatics we all know about the mechanism how bile duct is secreted by liver and how it function for liver okay so this was all about how cinchona officinalis works on liver how it affects liver cinchona and its alkaloid has a marked action upon the urinary organs greatly diminishing the uric acid according to dr renek he tried it in the three individuals in health and he found that under the influence of quinine the uric acid has diminished nearly one half and according to dr g k nurse he says when about 9 grains of quinine were taken 
is divided in divided doses during the course of a day. The urea was decreased, not quite one eighth, the uric acid to a little less than one half. The keratinin was slightly increased and the nitrogenous material decreased about one ninth. When a very large dose was taken in the morning, the urea and the creatinine were each decreased about one fourth, and was also the collective nitrogenous material. The phosphoric acid was lessened about one fifth, and the uric acid was about four fifth. So this was the observation of Dr. G. K. Nerds, and there are also so many ex well, so many scientists so many doctors who have discovered it by their means so this was all about how syncona officinalis how syncona officinalis works on the urinary organ that is especially kidney now next we will discuss about the sexual organ of the male and female how syncona barks on them or how syncona bark acts upon them so it has a specific and powerful action upon the organs of special sense located in the base of the brain shows us at once why this remedy is so useful in diseases of the generative organs so generative organs we are basically talking here about the reproductive organs of male and female so firstly let's start about the male symptoms how it affects the male system so there is debility nocturnal emissions impotence from long continued seminal losses bisexual dreams and complete prostration of the whole animal and muscular system so this was all about the male and now we will discuss how syncona officinalis work on the female reproductive system or female generative system. So according to Dr. Budd, he says, at present it seems established that quinine in full doses is a very powerful stimulant to the uterine contractions during labor. So here we are talking about parturition. The pain it produces so exactly stimulate the natural ones as to indicate that they are not so much caused by specific action of the drug as by its arousing the general nervous forces of the system. By this, as it may, most of the leading of this city and of New York are accustomed to relay upon quinine in cases of uterine inertia from exhaustion. So this is how syncona officinalis work wonderfully while labor pains in during parturition. So it work excellently there. Now next, next center that is muscular system. Now let's discuss about how syncona officinalis acts upon this particular system that is muscles. Syncona produces anemia, muscular prostrations, myalgia and neuralgia also. As shown in synchronism, in the extremities, quinine produces debility of the muscles, myalgia and intermittent rheumatic neuralgia. Full doses produce complete prostration of the motor nervous system and through this of the muscles. To get the great prostrating effect of this remedy require large doses, but it take a small quantity of the gelsemium and baratrum birdi. The effect of quinine are most lasting. It means it is chronic in nature. The prostrations of muscular system being in a great measure caused by anemia of the blood making organs. So this is how synchona officinalis acts on the acts upon the 
muscular system. Now next center that is skin which is very important. So in the cunine factories of the France it seems that an acne like eruptions is one of the most common effects of exposure to the cinchona dust and it's so clearly recognized that some workmen are obliged to abandon the business of account in its persistence. It appears in an acne like itching eruptions principally upon the thighs and scrotum etc. Though often over the whole body exuding a zero pus and finally forming sebus. When the suppurations attacks the face, it occasions great swelling of the head, face and eyelids, similar to the rust, rustox, rustox poisoning. And the suffering of the patient is often very acute, especially when it attacks the genital organs, it makes its appearance very shortly after exposure to the poison and disappears upon removal from its influence. So this is how Sincona officinalis break on skin. Now next center that is circulation here we are talking about blood. So Sincona and its alkaloid that is quinine is most potent protoplasmic poison remember it is the most potent protoplasmic poison even in minute doses it kills the whole corpuscles and this produces a state of system similar to that caused by loss of its vital fluid Dr. Biquet, he found that quinine increased the fibrin and diminishes the number of RBCs in the blood and this fact destroys the theory of the tonic properties of Sincona unless it is given in very minute dose. Anemia is well outlined in Sinconism. So this is how Sincona officinalis work on blood, how it works in large doses and how it works on small doses. So next center we have temperature. So the power of quinine has to reduce bodily temperature and it is mainly a therapeutic and not a physiological effect but small doses of from 5 to 10 grains do a physiological effect that is by elevating the normal temperature from one half to one degree so this is how Sincona officinalis work on temperature how it acts on temperature and now next center that is fever So there is a question mark here that what produces fever in human body? So increased tissue metamorphosis. Metamorphosis simply means decomposition produces heat in the human body and paralysis from diminished excitations of the nervous moderators produce fever heat. And according to Dr. Claude Bernard, he says, chill is a form of excitation of the sympathetic and heat is a form of paralysis. This looks reasonable for the nerves of the contractions as from the sympathetic nervous system and the nerves of dilatations and from the cerebrospinal roots. I hope now this is clear that what produces fever in human body. 
what is the exciting factor here and what is the paralyzing factor here so every fever remedy must act upon the cerebral nervous system for its ha for it has full control in the distribution of the blood throughout the organism and upon the temperature of its various parts so in our study of syncona we have found that its center of action is upon the base of the brain and the ganglionic nervous centers that controls the functions of organic human life this explain at once to the homeopath that why syncona and its alkaloid are so powerful in lowering the fever in human body and the quinine poison are so constituted that they have an affinity for each other so strong that the system acting upon them unites them by catalysis catalysis means breakdown forming a neutral substance that has no affinity for the previously affecting organs and tissues and consequently it easily throw off the functions of the body soon become normal again so this is how syncona officinalis work on fever now next center that is antiseptic action here we will discuss about how syncona officinalis has antiseptic action how we can use it antiseptically that is quinine is an active poison to the fungus and putrefaction and it cause fermentation an alcoholic fermentation is arrested at once by this alkaloid and according to professor h c bud he says as long ago as 1765 dr pringle called attention to the fact that syncona bark in decoction or powder has the power of preventing for a time putrefaction in flesh and more recently the subject has been studied by dr mayer and other so many other doctors so the experiment of these authorities has demonstrated that quinine in the proportions of one part to 300 will preserve for a long time flesh meal milk butter urine albumin and will check very markedly alcoholic fermentation in honey or in syrup so according to these experiments the large infusoria such as paramecia and colpoda are killed by a solution of quinine of the strength of 1 in 800 act as a antiseptic solution how it can prevent the growth of fungus bacteria and many other viruses so how we can use antiseptic so how we can use syncona officinalis for its antiseptic actions so this was all about the next center but not the least and the last center that is spinal nerves so syncona has and its alkaloid we all know that quinine it acts quite prominently upon the anterior spinal cord as shown by the great muscular paralysis according to the experiments the drug in poisonous toes abolishes all the reflex actions before voluntary motion and the lessening of the reflex actions is due not to a direct influence of the quinine upon the cord but to a stimulation of the inhibitory reflexes centers which has proven to exist in the cerebrum of a frog cerebrum here is a part of the brain in tetanus dr w a hemold credit quinine with curing 73% showing that it does have a fine curative action upon the cord its narcotic actions produce 
through the motor nerves prominent contractions of the muscular fiber so this was all about 17 centers of synchona officinalis and what was the story behind this particular drug that is synchona officinalis and how dr hanneman works upon this medicine which is in the ancient time used to treat malaria and how he discovered a new alternative medicine how he discovered a new pathy through this medicine that is synchona officinalis so this was all about so see you guys in our next video till then stay connected with us don't for don't forget to subscribe and comment below and thanks for watching our video